Hey, Matt, get me. We go Kool-Aid, man. I guess we go Kool-Aid, man. I guess we'll have to do it like that. Oh, oh, run it back, run it back. Yeah. Here we go. Clutch. Had to make sure, had to make sure we all know the sound. Clutch. Always reliable. In the real zone. Follow the morning. It is time for American Dancing Soccer. Episode 9. And James, all I can say is that we are doing a lot better than the state of Barcelona, the state of <laughs> Catalonia, the state of Joseph Rathu Bartolomeu, the state of everything Lionel Messi or Lionel Messi fans at Barcelona, because I think that could be it. I think that could be it. I think it's done for him. Sir. It, was, it wasn't only just it, even the telecast knew that could be it. Every go, it was like after they went up, after Byron went up by two goals. Every goal after that, they just would zoom in on him. I assume, like just his reaction, the players' reactions in the stands. Sometimes Vidal, but mostly just, just zooming in closely, tight shots on Messi. Mm -hmm. Just and Suarez looking like he was gonna cry every single time. And I was like, why don't you go do something? <laughs> well, he, well, 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 I mean, credit to Luis. He did record one of Barcelona's dos goals or whatnot with a wonderful. It wasn't Barcelona. They have two. They had two goals, but it really was a ninth for Burn. They just put it in the wrong net. That's realistically what it was. Right. <laughs> that first goal. Was... <laughs> so it's going to so wait, David Alaba. That is true. It was. It was not. It was. It, was, it, it wasn't was, really a goal. It, it, it was. He was trying to play it out, away, and like, it ricocheted off his. It, it and top shelf did so. It was going on the way, they the way they uno because the Bayern indeed was truly responsible <laughs> for nine of the ten goals. Where I can say, if you're, I think honestly, James, there's tremendous people on Bigo Live at joining. Always love to be also up to my awesome South African friend. I feel you, girl. Wonderful, wonderful. Ooh, Lisa, I see you, awesome lady. So let's get let's get right into this all the way, good sir. Because right now at the moment, um, it's a thing where this was Barcelona's um, most historic, worst ever defeat in a Champions League contest. And for it to happen truly in this year of COVID-19 is only fitting. And I think the, the people more static than, than Barcelona fans at the moment of, I mean, excuse me, Bayern Munich fans over this result are the fans of Real Madrid because they are going in on all of the tweets where people, I will probably have a separate episode showing all the tweets of Real Madrid fans laughing at the dismay that is Barcelona all the way because it is something to behold right now, the jokes that are being taken place on the whole Bagana. Because and, yeah. think about it before COVID, right? Before COVID, Barca was looking mighty strong. They were looking great. They were looking like they're about to, you know, they had a chance at a at domestic and Champions League possibility, at least getting a double. And it just went straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> it went absolutely straight to like I almost would prefer to bow out how Juve how you uh, Juve went out uh last week mm -hmm. then for them like me we predicted this like we knew i knew it was gonna be bad and and i text you at halftime i knew it was gonna be bad i didn't think it was gonna be this in bad before, in fact before halftime because Jane, for people that don't know i was behind on my stream because i had another call and i was busy you know seeing it one one when it was like 50-50 and then both teams certainly getting at each other's back line and everything. So I'm thinking, all right, eventually Bayern's going to still take this, but it's not going to look so bad for Barcelona to the point where it's like, well, Messi, I can still obviously see him staying. Now, after this whole entire contest, I would be kind of shocked if Lionel Messi, even in this COVID-19 era, this coronavirus era, and, you know, making transfer moves, during, the, during this period or whatever, it's very tight. 
I would be shocked if he stays because how could you stay after that where Kike Setien is gone? We all he been gone the minute the third the minute the third goal came in, he was gone. In fact, even if he won this um, competition, he would probably still be gone. So the fact that he even did a press conference. Oh, I forgot. I, I, I meant. Yeah. I, me I mentioned two, the two shots they went to after the goal started piling up. Mm. I forgot to say the third shot on the manager for Barcelona as well. <laughs> they were just, and what made it worse was like, as each goal happened, he got closer and closer to the dugout. It was like, you know, as each, as they started piling on, he went from like kind of in the technical area to like solidly in the coach's box to like hovering around oh. where the canopy goes to like deep. <laughs> it just kept getting worse. I mean, the thing, what else made it interesting to me was like you and I were coming from a viewing perspective of two different angles mm -hmm. because I was, I was running errands earlier. I caught the first, the I missed the first 15 minutes. So when I got was watching the game, it was 1-1. Mm -hmm. But by the time I started watching, it was like clearly Byrne had decided to get in control. Mm -hmm. And there were high pressing to the nines. And yes, I was like, were. oh, this is about to be a road. Like, I was, and so that's why once they started scoring, that was why I texted you. I was like, oh, the route's on now. Like, it, it's bad. It is, but you know what? That's that second goal that Byron scored where they never looked back, you know, at all. You know, it was something with Barcelona. It, it, it was coming from when Barcelona, um, you know, has stopped Byron a little bit where just, I think it was, I forgot it was either Bosang that had to, had to pass or whatever. And um, Semedo had to pass, you know, had it and was dribbling. And Serge Gnabry, who I have to say, Serge Gnabry, he's the best pressure, pressure and presser in the world because this search Gabby will strip you if you are a fullback it doesn't matter if you're Barcelona you it doesn't matter if you're paddleborn it does not matter if you're Norris City side him he will strip you or whatnot and that's, he he's got that James Harden that's why he loves James Harden him and James Harden that's friend. why I love watching him play because if I don't know what it is about them but if him and Lewandowski question your dribbling skills at all, mm -hmm. they are going to be. And they – Lewandowski's not as good defensively. Like, Gnabry can honestly play. He, he can be a midfielder to, and play back. He has enough skill, defensive skills. And that's why he's just picking people clean. He also is good about um, – very good at playing passing lanes and intercepting the ball mm -hmm. as well or forcing you into a poor pass. And I think – like the pressure, who t surprised, surprised me was um, Thomas Miller today. He looked, he looked like young Tom. <laughs> he looked like young Thomas Miller because he was high pressing too, to the nines. That rest, and then, that rest, that rest. And then it was even worse because then you had, uh, Coleman was already playing midfield, but he was already high pressing. But then you had Davies just bombarding forward as much as possible. Yeah, and then and messy, honest, you know. And then once they scored, I think five, then you had a lava coming up as well. It was like, oh, yeah. It was, everybody was just like, oh, it's a feast now. It was like, oh. The, the route was on. What, what I want to focus on is on that second goal with Paris that scored to make it 2 1. And that was mm -hmm. the defining moment of the game. Uh, Mark Andre Tarsagan coming into this contest, the big talking point, you know, besides the obvious in terms of individual. Matches is like who is Germany's best goalkeeper, and for the for the long over the last two years, it's been more Andre Ter Stegen. He's performed Manuel Neuer because he's better with his feet. He's always been better with his feet than Manuel Neuer, who's always tried to be a goalkeeper and it's ended disastrously, <laughs> as we know sometimes. But he still does it. Press on, and his form is slightly dipped. Where there's a lot of people in Deutschland who feel that Ter Stegen should have been made the number one by Joachim Lowe, who should have been going as a coach after the World Cup. But um, they felt like he was now the number one, truly. And Ter Stegen can, claim, can make a claim that he's the best goalkeeper in the world. Now, tonight, though, it was, it was just, it was just, he, he has to say, it was a great hit by Perisic, who's terrific on both his feet. And one of my favorite players, Yvonne Perisic, for all his incredible energy, outstanding career. And I'm glad he's really getting, like, his deserved plaudits. 
But Ter Stegen, for how great he is, that was shocking that he gave up that goal. It was then shocking that. And that was such a bat blow because then they got, you know, Byron with the lead, they're comfortable. And then that third goal to give that, I mean, basically, Thiago, who should have been still at Barcelona, making it fittingly enough to have Barcelona boy had screwed this up and Barcelona all the way down. So allow him to go to buy him when, when Pep was there and Pep took him and everything. And it shows that Pep, he had the foresight because on that goal, Thiago, perfect pass. And you have Clement Lele, who has a place Samuel TC as PK's, you know, partner because he can dribble with the ball or whatnot. But even though ncc has been out with injury, or whatever, TT typically can be on, can be good enough oh, to me. I think defensively in terms of getting tackles in long leg, and long leg doesn't have the pace, and he just could not keep up with Gnabry, Lewandowski, brilliant, clever fit, and he just it was just this is why you have to give it up to Hansi Flick. Hansi Flick, he has made himself to be a top manager. I didn't think Nico Kovac was doing that bad of a job. And I was like, fine, you're getting greedy or whatever. You're getting greedy. But Hansi Flick I, it is arguable, especially if Thomas Sukul wins the Champions League of PSG, that the best three, three, the best three managers in the world are, are possibly German in terms of Jurgen Klopp, in, well, in terms of Hansi Flick, and in terms of, uh, and in terms of Thomas Sukul. Now, Pat Guardiola was obviously in the middle of it, but he needs to really win the Champions League for City, and they're going to be the underdogs against Bayern Munich. You know, it's going to be, but yeah, yeah. but it's going to be fast. I, I agree with you. I, I would have said that before. Just the way that he has them focused. I mean, like me, we were talking about the Bundesliga from before COVID happened was pretty much in their grasp, which was, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I think that might have been later than last year mm -hmm. but they were in comparison to last year's team when you watch the Bundesliga on Saturday from in comparison from last year to this year mm -hmm. you could see like he was better about managing guys time managing guys so like you know some of the games that they drew or some of the games that they eked out they weren't going with like their A team you know mm -hmm. what I mean and they have so much depth I thought it was so interesting to see him sub Boateng off and bring Sule on, um, <laughs> which was basically kind of just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we know you're done, and we're going to bring on a different center back. Yeah. Like, just completely change exactly and, how we're well, playing. Honestly, Nicolas Sule, he had replaced Jerome Boateng. I was going to say, he replaced Boateng. Like, don't even get me started about the scary prospect of if they wanted to play a back four and stop people from scoring, they can do that, right? Like, they have enough, enough depth yes, that if yeah. they, they need magical goals, to me, from top to bottom, I mean, what made it so funny to me was I almost, I almost texted you in the second half and, say, and said, Byron, Byron doing exactly what they're used to, which is knowing how to aggressively, boringly time a game out, which is what they've been doing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. in the Bundesliga for five. Like, it was just like patting it. All right, we're up by two goals. We're going to pass the ball around. But if you don't take it and press and you allow us running room in lanes, we're going to do what we need to do. And that's essentially what it looked like. It just was like mm -hmm. it, they could have honestly, <laughs> for people who don't watch soccer, they could have honestly scored like 15 goals if they wanted to today. Well, yeah, I mean, especially when Ter Stegen's trying to play it out the back, and, and, and he just yeah. he he just did not to me calm and see them. And if he gets set to end, he just stuck in his ways of, of still a Spanish coach and now trying to be my Spanish coach at Barcelona. And he couldn't reel the team in and say this is not the way to go. This is something where we have to respect our opponents and not play our football. Where they're better than us. They are better than us. And That's what made it so interesting to me, even like watching Arturo Vidal throughout the entire game, complain, play hard, play rough. That's his style of game. But it also was just while you're watching, you're just like, dude, this is, game is so over. Like, <laughs> they were playing kind of, 
this arrogant expecting to be able to like what I love about Premier League teams when you see them in Champions League again what I love about Chelsea is Chelsea will go into a match and be like listen oh, you know we don't have Chelsea you doing the Chelsea look at the Chelsea we, fan we don't have to listen we we don't have a chance in this game but what we can do is we're going to play a style so that we do have a chance right so if we lose we ain't going to lose 8 to 2 we might lose three to one. We might lose three nil, but we ain't gonna lose eight to two. Whereas Barca came out today and they were like, oh, we going toe to toe. And I feel like that first 15 minutes that I missed, depending on how it went, it seemed that might've been kind of their death knell for them because they could have probably like, you know, that was their, oh, we scored against them. And I'm like, have you guys not watched Bayern this entire season? Like they are very, okay and capable with giving up the first second and third goal because once they get going they're like oh so so now you have to stop us right like and and we're talking about them doing against this against Leipzig Dortmund coming back um strong about strong after giving up you know two goal leads Mm -hmm. and and coming back and winning and come back and blowing I think I forget which one of the team it might have been the first Der Classica where they came back and it was just like, and then they ended up blowing. It was a, it was a snooze fest by the 60 something minute, the 75th minute. Like, have you not watched them? Did you really think you were going to go toe to toe with them instead of sitting back but, and trying to counter punch? Well, you, well, you, well, you thought it was a snooze fest this game at the set? It was just this game you thought it was a snooze fest after the 76 minute or? I don't think I didn't think that this game was a snooze fest. I, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it, it, that's what it exactly was. You know, <laughs> you know. It, it was comedy, but when I say snooze fest, I mean like you know you're not gonna see any. The team has no chance of coming back. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like Bar- they yeah. just don't have enough firepower. Yeah, I mean even when Bayern played the season and blew out teams, it, I, it still was fun to watch because they really have gotten to this level with Hansi Flick. He's become like a cross of Yip Hankins and Pep Guardiola. Pep, this is how Bayern, how Pep wishes Bayern played, you know, under him, you know, where they could be this dynamic with the pressing, but not pass and triangle too much or whatever and make the perfect move. Where the perfect move could just be two, three little passes, bam, go, bam, go. You know, just like, just, just like that. And um, it's just I think be- this team mm-hmm. has, not to cut you off again, Andrew, I feel like I've been doing that a lot. For this no, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's the way I was going to say, I think, um, I think this team has a lot more legs and pace than the team that Pep had. I think Pep had a lot of guys who were really, yes. really good. Yes. But this team, like, yeah, yeah. I would like Davies, like um, Gnabry, that's a trap team. That's a trap team. And let's ask yeah. him to still move. Yes, this is one of those, and then the passing, the crossing, technical skill as well. So I know yeah. I rag on Raheem Sterling as well, but like he be like, he has moments when he's a technical agent. He can be technically great, right? And whereas and Gnabry and uh, Davies, my boy Coman, he shows it in moments of brilliance. I think what happens with Coman is he with Kingsley, he loses focus. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. if it's not if it's not a big time like today's game, like he can make a run and he can make the cross, but he doesn't have to do it consistently. Mm-hmm. Whereas Davies and Paris, especially tonight, were like, oh yeah, every time they made a run, their crosses were cutting past like two, three. Like at the end of the game, it was funny to me because you could see like Tristegan and PK just literally would not do anything, and that's when you knew you had the defense stifled. Is when you're making a cross. And neither the goalkeeper or the primary sent back do anything. They both are just flat footed like this. Yes. <laughs> and it was just like Yes. Well, James, let me say these two things real quick. Um, the close on this. Um, you saw how Davis made tomato look, and I posted this on Instagram because when, for that fifth goal, I was just hoping that he was gonna score it all the way. Because he just addressed tomato who wasn't playing to Davis's weaker right foot. You, and this is the thing, this is, it was just like a lot of details that was just so, that was so troubling throughout this match um, from, from Barcelona overall, not just kicking the ball up the field. And this is why Kikis is gone. And little details like that, Semedo, 
with the responsible two goals. When he gets dispossessed in that midfield by Gnabry, which led to Paris's goal, you know, that Ter Sagan should have saved. And then Pavies, when they win, Barcelona had late hope with Suarez, great cutback goal on both teams. It's 4 2. You got Semedo not understanding that Davies on his, he's going, he wants to go left. And he lets him go left and lets him dresses him. And that led to Davies friend for Kimmich, who in Kimmich, he just is like, I want to say it perfectly, he's like the cross between Philip Lamb and Danny Alves. And he truly, truly is a Joshua Kimmich. That was, I got to give my man um, Sian, Sian Nayari some credit on that because he's German. He, you know, so I think the comparison like that. So, let me, that's an important question because the Barcelona's in a debacle and we can talk about them clearly at a full-length discussion all the way with the current debacle that they are in. Is this Lionel Messi's last match for Barcelona after tonight? I, the way it was looking and hearing that he was unhappy I felt like if they were, if it was close, I told you, we said, talked about this before. I told you if it was close, I could see them trying to talk him into staying. I absolutely, honestly don't know what they could do. Mm -hmm. Tonight was a pure, it was purely showing that they are like, if there was any more evidence he needed, (laughs) if they talk to him, if they show him a pitch, they go to him with a sales pitch on why he should stay. Mm-hmm. His agent is just going to counter with the game video of tonight. <laughs> okay? It, it's clearly like a, a large gap between the, the current state of this team and the Bayern Munich, uh, Liverpool's, because even though they're not there, they are still trouble. Mm-hmm. The cities, the PSGs, yes. the even Leipzig and Dortmund, <laughs> even Juventus. There's a huge gap between Barca. Even for Real, even they showed more fight. I'm going. Yeah, and they and won. Their exit. And they won La Liga, you know, and they have much more of a promise set up, you know, right now than Barcelona does um, currently. And I, I, I still firmly say that, and I'll be shocked, as I said, the other reiterate before, as I reiterate from before, if I'm Lionel Messi stays. With Barcelona after this one, because I I just would be through. I just would be totally through. Well, on that note, folks, this is the shortest episode of Americans in Create Soccer so far, but that's what makes it so great for you to watch and whatnot. For me and Jay, for me, Andrew Jones, for James Eddie, overall, whatnot. This is what it is with Andrew Jones. This is Americans in Create Soccer. Thanks for watching whatsoever, and may you join us again. Once more, catch you on the next one. Peace.